it, honey. Amadou Diallo was killed, that changed my life. And he was shot at 41 times and hit 19. That changed my whole perspective on, on um, police brutality, on violence in our communities. Um, so that spurred me to write a position paper on behalf of the Student National Medical Association. And I believe that if I'm not wrong, and those that are watching, if I'm wrong, call in and let me know. Uh -huh. But I believe I was the first to make any statement about police brutality as a health issue um, and make recommendations on how to research it and how to identify injuries associated with law enforcement abuse. The number one killer for black males ages 15 to 34 is homicide. That's why I'm here. Roger Mitchell is a medical student who wants to see things change in the African-American community. Together with other minority medical students, he hopes to help Atlanta teens get a handle on violence. The first step shows that these high-achieving, intelligent future physicians like the same music and come from the same background as many of these high schoolers. During workshop sessions, we will be saying to them, what do you know about violence? What do you know about suicide, family violence, school violence, urban violence? How pervasive is it in your community? Each workshop must give three recommendations for ending violence. All of their solutions then get added to the Student National Medical Association's official report to the CDC and the U.S. Health Department. They will have a true stake in policy coming out of this conference. The righteous way to go. Having a, a reliable, consistent adult figure that a young man can model after is critical to their development. We're trying to show the importance of understanding that they're not alone in this fatherlessness and that making sure that that is not a barrier towards their ultimate success and understanding that their success is not contingent upon their circumstances. Their success is contingent upon the choices that they're willing to make. all over the country, U.S. Attorney is bringing cases all over the country, holding physicians liable, criminally liable, for over-prescribing. Pill mills are all over the country, primarily they, they've erected in, in or been present in, in Florida, um, but they're holding people criminally liable. But this conversation is a good conversation. In May, the governor um, uh, wrote in the Good Samaritan Law. The governor of Jersey, Chris Christie. That is correct. And that's Good Samaritan the, Law, um, two minutes left, what is that? That's the Overdose um, Prevention Act. That allows for medicine naloxone to be administered um, by individuals that are with people overdosing um, without necessarily being criminally convicted of, of, that, of, of taking drugs themselves. So it protect, protects the caller, the 911 caller, from um, being prosecuted if they're trying to help save a life. So it's not just physicians, it's government. It's, it's parents of those who may be abusing prescription drugs. 
It's uh, nonprofit organizations like the Partnership for Drug Free uh, New Jersey. It's the media. It's all of us. That's right. It's it's Project Medicine Drop, which is That's another right. consumer affairs um, where they're they're. Yeah, what um, do you do with your prescription? That's drugs? right. That's right. Um, because you got to discard them. Young people, 14 percent of all the deaths are young people um, less than 25 years old. Right? So you have to lock these things up if you're yeah. still using them. Lock them up. And you have to discard them properly. Dr. Will, continue this conversation. We still have very important work to do, but I thank you for your public service.